Though, so, uh, I've heard of them losing a T95 in a farmer's field, but this is just ridiculous. I'm Ash, welcome yourselves back to Tank Mechanic Sim. And if you see this hammer swinging at you violently in the night, that's because this hammer is coming for you. If you don't like, comment, or subscribe. You see this stug? He's going to disappear and disintegrate in seconds if you don't do as I have just requested. Today's video is all about the mouse, so join me as we restore the thickest tank there is to be in known in existence. Right, let's get stuck into it. Right, we begin with the welder, and I've just picked this up because I've noticed a couple of spots. Now, this is something unknown to me for a long while. You know, apparently those black spots you needed to actually fill in with welding uh, equipment. So anyway, just double checking the sides and there are plenty of holes to at least fill in. But yes, there'll be more of that later on. Anyway, it is time for a general inspection because this vehicle has just come into the workshop, which means that I pretty much like to make sure that I have done absolutely everything to the body and documented everything as much as possible. Now, in a typical restoration scenario, you would start with documentation first and foremost. You'd find out the history of, about the vehicle, and you would document the living daylights out of it till you actually found a particular location, or necessarily not just that, but more importantly, you know, you've looked at the vehicle enough to go, yeah, okay, this is something that I actually want to, you know, restore, or how do you restore something like this? Because one thing is re restoration, for restoration's sake, and then another is just, you know, making something for preservation now while one of these vehicles do exist in the real world it doesn't have any interior at all so the game designers have had a little bit of liberty in terms of what they can do and can't do so it'd be interesting to see whether or not going off the, the blueprints that they have provided that essentially they have done a historical diligence as the pershing that i actually covered in the last video was incredibly off Okay, there are some points which I have to weld, but I must say this is the highest point that I've ever been in a vehicle sitting on top. Okay, that's right. They're the the, uh, the periscopes are replaceable only, so I can't necessarily repair them. There's a big black spot on the top of the turret there, which we're going to have to repair, and I'm going to have to somehow get inside the turret, which is going to be an utter pain. Suffice to say, that these stairs are not exactly cut out for the job, but uh, somehow we're able to stand on the side anyway. Get out the welder again and fix her up. Nicely done. Okay. Don't think there's anything else here. Let's start stripping her down. That's the idea, at least for today. Uh, first off, let's select the engine and we're going to put it on engine stand one. And then we're going to go to the turret. And we're also going to put it on turret stand number one. Oh boy. Okay. Right. What an absolute behemoth of a turret. Holy hell. Okay. When you separate the parts, you realize how big and ludicrous this thing is uh but first and foremost let's get the rust removal tool and we're going to go through everything under here driver's seat some of the fuel tanks uh i don't know what those are fuel conditioning systems all right again i don't know much about the interior of a mouse oh hang on oh dear hans we are getting stuck yeah right see is there anything else i can restore in here while i'm in here because i don't think i'm getting out of this one unless i fall through the floor come on out out hunts we have a problem all right uh let's see can i fall through the floor if not i'm gonna have to reset my position come on re fall through the floor ah there we go beautiful oh good we've got access to the under the road wheels all right now the thing about the mouse is it's got a hybrid electric drive so while it has a big big diesel engine to power the thing the majority of it is essentially powered by two electric motors which are from a submarine if i'm uh my sources were correct or at least so i've been told by other people i don't know too much about the mouse as a vehicle itself i know it's thick it's heavy you can play it in, in video games it's quite popular as being one of the worst tanks in the world but you know, this game doesn't have the Bob sample yet, and I'd like to see that uh, be able to, uh, you know, play, restore, and uh, test drive. So the aim is to get this thing uh, to about 99, if not 100% uh, restoration status. We can get the engine running, we can get everything uh, operational, and we can then go shove it in the museum next to the first tank I have restored. Now, unfortunately, like my previous playlist, uh, I lost that save, so... Know, the one rusty tiger and everything like that that's all somehow disappeared 
as that was the demo back in the day, the, uh, the closed beta. This game's been out for a while and I haven't really revisited it for a long time. Alas, let's cut a bit forward. We're going to go do the uh, interior of the turret. Right, uh, sandblasting everything down is a bit of a pain in some ex uh, circumstances. Look, I'm just going to remove all the items that I haven't necessarily uh, de-rusted myself. Uh, we're going to basically disassemble the tank, uh, and we're going to go from there. So we might as well just start disassembling everything, and go back to bare hull. That is at least the aim today. But uh, restoration is quite a tricky process, as I've mentioned in previous videos, at least on Tank Mechanic Sim. If you haven't seen the playlist of, of, of necessarily the videos that I've produced on this game, then I highly suggest you go and take a look at that. I've had probably the most fun playing this game. It's quite relaxing and, you know, I'll be honest, making content like this is quite easy uh, because what I'm doing is essentially just pulling a bunch of parts out, storing them, and then putting them back in a vehicle. And I mean, while that might be boring to some, I find this utterly fascinating because games like this often showcase more important in-depth items and, you know, things than most other games would th consider to think about. While they have great 3D models, they might not think about the internal components as being just that. Remember that everything you touch has been designed, made, built, manufactured, and is some level of, I guess, man manufacturing processing. This is a vehicle which had a couple of prototypes. You know, it's the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest tank in the world. Uh, and it exists in Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. Now, that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a bucket list. I need to go and see this vehicle. But uh, alas, with the current world climate going on. Um, and th these games really showcase the amount of engineering that actually went into stuff like this. You know, you, you think simply, oh, the biggest tank in the world, or you think the smallest tank, or whatever. But these machines, these were made to fulfill a purpose. Granted, it is a little bit crazy, but we humans, we tend to be a little bit crazy in our own, I guess, thought pattern, right? We come up with crazy ideas and crazy things to do, because... You know, that's just who we are as humans, right? It's, you know, we look for the bigger and the better and the grass is greener on the other side. That's, that's just what we do. Anyway, removing the cannons, we're going to remove all the basket hatches and everything we possibly can from the inside of this uh, turret. Bit of a weird looking vehicle, I must say, from a, a standpoint of removing absolutely everything from the interior of the turret. Because you can't go inside the turret per se to remove all these things like you normally would. Uh, the, the turret basket is so huge, you can't actually get up into it. It's sort of a limitation with this game. Some of the tanks and some of the vehicles you can't actually get into to properly restore. So you have to rely on this uh, interior view, which is kind of a bit misleading, but also a, I feel a bit dodgy not having to go in there and manually do everything myself. Because everything's laid out here in a, I, I want to say a diagram, but look at it. It's just there in front of me that I'm, that I'm able to, to pull off. Now, obviously, I've de-rusted some of these parts. Uh, the rest of them I'm probably going to outsource and repair. I've got enough money, I think, to at least get the, the parts mostly restored myself. But uh, for the most part, the turret is almost done. Yeah, so there we go. And now we've just got a few more components for the inside of this machine. And it's basically uh, time to strip it down even further. So I can't take out those uh, those pieces, can I? Hull exterior, okay, air exhaust, right, we've forgotten something critical. And that's the thing, this game relies heavily on statistics. Thankfully, there is a statistics page. If you were actually restoring a vehicle like this, it'd be in-depth research to the blueprints, designs, historians, before pulling anything out. Alright, take off the sprocket wheel, oh my goodness, that's a lot of screws. Alright, get the socket wrench, we're going to go all the way around like so, and hopefully everything can be pulled off. Ah, right, okay, next part, the boogie frame. Okay, interesting. So we've got a couple more pieces of the actual uh, running gear. 
and I should say the road wheel, at least one of them, plus a suspension arm. A very hyper-complex uh, system that the Germans come up with, I can tell you that much. And that is basically it. We've pulled every part out of both turret and hull, and these things are incredibly just... Look at the size of these things. It just dwarfs the, the workshop. I'm surprised these things even fit. With the Panzer IV in the background as well, it kind of just makes it just look obscene. Like, this is crazy. Really puts into perspective, you know, how insane these marvels of engineering were, despite the fact that they have incredibly dark history. Oh, I've spotted a hole. All right, quick, grab the welder. Nope, nothing to see here. That is quite a decent hole. Like, if I was to repair that and fill it in with tea, that's a bit a lot of welding there to replace all that metal. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching. In part two, we're going to restore it. We're going to get it into operational condition. I'm going to take it on a test drive because that's what we want to do. Or maybe we'll make this a three-part series. Who knows? Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in a tank mechanic sim video soon because this thing is super fun.